So for those who don't know, a criminal group believed to be behind the Colonial Pipeline cyber attack, major concerns about fuel supply, and this is it right here. It runs from Texas all the way up through New Jersey. I don't see the top of the map. I don't know if it goes all the way up to New York, but it goes right past me. I mean, I'm, I'm in uh, Maryland over here. Um, so, you know, I'm outside D.C. and Baltimore, which it seems like it goes just north of D.C. and right through Baltimore, maybe. Um, but yeah, the Colonial Pipeline Company was the victim of a cybersecurity attack Friday in an incident that involved ransomware. The company, which is responsible for the country's largest fuel pipeline, immediately halted operations, which affected the transportation of oil to the eastern United States and beyond. The FBI says the dark side ransom group, ransomware group is responsible for the compromise. The U.S. government also issued a rare emergency declaration after the cyber attack. Thanks to the declaration, the U.S. Department of Transportation's Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration is now working to create more flexibility for motor carriers and drivers. FMCSA is issuing a temporary hours of service exemption that applies to those transporting gasoline, diesel, jet fuel, and other refined petroleum products to Alabama, Arkansas, District of Columbia, Delaware, Florida, Georgia, Kentucky, Louisiana, Maryland, Mississippi, New Jersey, New York, North Carolina, Pennsylvania, South Carolina, Tennessee, Texas, and Virginia, a lot of the eastern uh, states. Below is a statement from the Colonial Pipeline Company. Colonial Pipeline continues to dedicate vast resources, resources to restoring pipeline operations quickly and safely. Segments of our pipeline are being brought back online in a stepwise fashion. In compliance with uh, relevant uh, federal regulations and in close uh, consultation with the Department of Energy, which is leading and coordinating the federal government's response. Restoring our network to normal operations is a process that requires the diligent uh, remediation of our systems, and this takes time. In response to that cybersecurity attack on our system, we proactively took certain systems offline to contain the threat, which temporarily halted all pipeline operations and affected some of our IT systems. To restore service, we must work to ensure that each of these systems can be brought back online safely. While this situation remains fluid and continues to evolve, the Colonial Operations Team is executing a plan that involves an incremental process that will facilitate a return to service in a phased approach. This plan is based on a number of factors will, with safety and compliance driving our operational decisions and the goal of substantially restoring operational service by the end of the week. The company will provide updates as restoration efforts pr uh, progress. We continue to evaluate product inventory in storage tanks at our facilities and other along our system and are working with our shippers to move this product to terminals for local delivery. Actions taken by the federal government to issue a temporary hours of service exemption for motor carriers and drivers transporting refined products across Colonial's footprint should help alleviate local supply disruptions and we thank our government partners for their assistance in resolving this matter. Our primary focus continues to be the safe and eff efficient restoration of service to our pipeline system while minimizing disruption for our customers and all those who rely on Colonial Pipeline. We appreciate the patience of the traveling public and, su and the support we have received from the federal government and our peers throughout the industry. Now, of course, Biden says there's no evidence of, of Russia being behind the Colonial Pipeline attack, although there is evidence of the actors ransomware is in russia okay so they found that this uh, what is the the company called again a dark side ransomware group is in russia but it isn't russia per se so we don't actually know uh we do know that it was a, a basically a, a emergency declaration that has been declared uh so we'll see what's going to happen there i do find it interesting though i gotta just say fuel uh, prices have been on the rise lately and I even got into I wouldn't say an argument because I didn't really argue I just kind of made a statement and it triggered uh, a liberal friend of mine uh, they were uh, another we'll just say Trump supporter friend of mine um, posted about gas going up now this was about a month ago maybe two months ago I think it was it was maybe mid-march and they were like 
gas prices, my goodness, like, thanks, Biden. And I was like, yeah, it's going to get worse. Watch. And my, we'll call him liberal friend, started, like, snapping off because he's like, oh, of course, these guys want to blame Biden for everything. It's this and this and this. And I was like, uh, I mean, he, it is his fault. Like, he, his policies are directly he canceled the keystone pipeline uh we were energy uh independent for the first time in 40 years maybe longer i don't remember exactly the amount of time but now we've got this happening like suddenly our main pipeline is under attack and now we're gonna have to buy i'm sorry not we're going to have to buy we are literally having ships sent from europe churning over here with gas so that we can buy from other sources I mean, we are no longer energy independent. That's kind of huge. We're now reliant on other people's gas. Like that's the whole reason the uh, the TPP, the, the Trans-Pacific Partnership was terrible because it locked us in to buying gas from uh, other countries. It, you know, down in the bill, if you if you find out, it's like, actually, we were locked in. We had to. And if we stopped buying oil from these countries, they could sue us. They didn't want us to be energy independent. This gas comes from Texas. OK, look, I'm all about moving on to a, a new energy. But I, I recognize the fact that we need gas still. All right. And until we don't need gas, it would be nice that we wouldn't have to, you know, pay other countries that may have terrible um, environmental policies, mm? right? Like China, for example, 